Hello chess fans, so today we are going to look at the game between Maria Musichuk and Valeria Dotan. Uh, um, Maria has the white pieces and it was played in 2012. Uh, Maria was on her way to becoming world champion later in 2015 here. And Valeria was at the time uh, rated 2064, so it should not be a too difficult game for, uh, for white based on rating. And we actually will see that uh, Black kind of misplaced the opening and gets instantly punished for that. Um, the moves until here are all theory. But I have to say that, uh, if you just quickly go through them again, uh, that the white moves make perfect sense from all the, the general opening rules you have learned. All pieces so far played once, two pawns in the center, uh, bishop on c1 is developed, although not, not yet moved. And uh, this is the first time that we move a piece for the second time so all very very logical and as mentioned it is all theory also black is playing theory and uh, after d5 uh, the most common move here is actually knight f6 that would be the the book move now and it kind of makes sense uh, you place the knight in a better square uh, you open up for your bishop on c8 uh, personally I, I would play uh, bishop to e7 also a totally fine move now it was clear that uh, Black uh, was actually out of the her own opening book here already, at least I think so, um, because I highly doubt the move was prepared. And I don't know why she didn't play either Knight f6 or Bishop e7. The Bishop e7, you might think, well, I don't like uh, pawn takes e6, but after f takes e6 and castles, Black is really not that in that bad for shape. Um, what Black did here, though, was a, a bit peculiar, in, m in my opinion. It was knight to e5. And yeah, that, that is clearly offering the knight and a bit of a peculiar pawn structure. And after the trade, uh, we are very nice here as white. We play f4. That's also what, uh, what Maria did here. And, uh, oh, sorry, we played f4. And yeah, now now it's a bit of, of a challenge for, uh, for Black. Um, Queen c7 was played, and I pondered a bit about this move. Um, the engines indicate it's, it's, it's the third move, so it's clearly playable, but it's still a bit peculiar for me. And it has a couple of reasons. If you want to, to support your pawn on, on e5, uh, you might as well play bishop to uh, d6 in, instead, which makes mo more sense because you make uh, also room for castling. And it's just uh, the better development move. Now, after queen c7, white can play the very nice move, in my opinion. F takes e5. That was the first thing I thought when I when I saw it. And now it really makes the most sense to just take back. <laughs> That's a fly. So I'm not hitting myself for any other reason. So um, here, after queen takes... Bishop f4 is is very annoying for black because there are only two s places where the black queen can go. And, well, queen f6 is, is not a move that's intuitive, first of all, because you don't want to put your queen into a discovered attack. But, uh, interestingly enough, the best move here for white is to actually leave the discovered attack and just play e5. And the reason for that is after the black queen moves, let's say queen to g6, we can play d6. And now we have a protected pass pawn. The black bishop on f8 has quite some serious development problems. And the king on, uh, on e8 is not happy at all. It's not that clear how that will come to safety. It might be stuck in the center for, for quite a bit. Um, of course, black has some ideas. You can play bishop to d7 to c6. And then you have to consider that the queen is eyeing your, your king. But overall, black has real development issues on the king side. And uh, white has lots of space and a very nasty pawn, which is also even an insurance. If nothing else, if it was not annoying enough already in the black camp, it's a very, very nice uh, trump to have for an end game. So let's go back. Because clearly that is not what black will play. So what would happen then if you play queen to d4 check? Well, it's the most logical one because of the two choices you have. It is not putting your queen in harm's way. And it is also a better move, but now we have queen takes d4. And after c takes d4, now we have the very nice 
knight to a4 and our threat is is simplistic we want to play knight to b6 attacking the rook and also the the, the bishop if the rook goes up but there are some other lines that might be even better then so what does uh, does black do here well there is really no good defense against this uh, it might look that bishop to d7 keeps the material but then we can still play knight to b6 we attack the rook well clearly you're not going to play rook a7 because then bishop to b8 uh, picks up a full rook so that's not an option and rook to d8 we just play bishop to c7 and we win a rook for a minor piece so that's quite good so it will absolutely uh, lead to a clear advantage to just take on e5 and also not taking of course we can push the pawn with d6 and create havoc there so there is really no good response for, for black um, however queen to h5 is played by Maria and that's also a very principal very good move continuing uh, development of uh, putting the uh, queen in a very harassing harassing place for black and yeah what do you want to do black played bishop to uh, d6 here and now now you don't want to play f takes e5 because then we get bishop takes e5 and the queen is now doing a very useful job on c7 at this defending the f7 pawn for a second time which is really needed because otherwise you would have a very nasty well at least check on f7 so we can now not take any more uh, but we do have the very nice f5 and, and the problem here with, with with f5 is that there's no again not a very good response possible um, if you let's say okay we, we we take f5 which is actually the best move then white just takes back and now we have created space for our uh, knight on e4 uh, on c3 that can jump into the game in e4 where it will be very dominant we already have our queen on the threatening square the uh, the pawn on uh, on f5 is already generating lots of space might be pushed in in the future the rock on uh, the f file can be lifted and our bishop uh, might we might even want to play a sacrifice at, the, at any moment but if not needed we can jump into the game very quickly as well so many many unpleasant things here for black um, Black did not play that and opted to go for g6 and that does not really help because the reply that was played is just the best one it's the simple f takes g6 and now the the pawn on g6 even acts as an extra attacker of f7 and again it, that is very annoying and there's not a very good a good way of, of of treating this first of all the h7 pawn is of course pinned because if we mo if we take with h7 pawn then we lose our rook um if we want to uh, defend the pawn with rook f8 then this is devastating g7 attacking the rook well rook to g8 queen takes h7 and game over so and if you think for oh you know what instead of uh, the rook let me uh, then just try to castle that would be an absolute blunder because i've checkmate in one so the really only option that black had here and it's also not a pleasant one is the move that was played is f takes g6 now white comes with a simple response a uh, queen to h4 very good and it is clear that uh, black's king uh, king position is is just totally totally horrendous and is it not going to improve soon uh, st black still tries and after bishop to e7 it's a logical move but white continues to bishop to g5 now if you have the instinct to simplify the position as as black uh, just to get some pressure off with uh, bishop takes g5 that is not a bad idea in itself but it doesn't work because queen takes g5 and now well you still have the problem if you now want to again offer to release some tension with let's say queen to e7 then oops the pawn was hanging now the rook is also hanging 
and after the rook is moved we play d6 and this is very very nasty so that would not be a pleasant option black instead tries to relieve tension with first playing queen to d8 uh, but now it is actually a very very nice move and this is one of the reasons why i i uh, uploaded this game um it's actually two reasons first of all to see how you can take advantage of, of some mistakes in the opening and how it's important to just always play according to open opening principles but the second one is clearly this because this move is so nice queen to f2 absolute beautiful move now not necessarily because black cannot take the bishop because clearly mm. black takes takes bishop oops checkmate again so that in itself is funny but because the response rook f8 is just not possible that's that's very very nice because if rook f8 which might look it's a bit annoying but yeah or or bishop is pinned and now we just get queen takes f8 check well not no other response possible really then bishop takes f8 then we have bishop takes queen and after queen takes bishop we take the bishop again we are up a full rook and we will win the game or actually have already won the game more or less so that was not an option um yeah, black decided to still play a uh, queen d7. And now queen f7 check. Uh, it is really game over at this moment. Uh, black wanted to see a couple of more moves to see how it fini how it ends, I guess, and played king to d8. And now d takes e6 is absolutely devastating. And it was in this position that black resigned. So just to have a quick look at the at the final position. So why did black resign? Well, black might, uh, might have resigned to move earlier as well. But uh, in this position, it's clear that your uh, black queen is attacked. Um, if you say, okay, let me take the pawn, queen takes e6. Then we have bishop takes e7 check. Well, you need to take back. And now you get a problem because after rook to a to d1 check, of course, you cannot move your king you, you, you because you lose your queen. Uh, put your queen uh, in front of the check. You Push your queen as well, so bishop to d7 then. Well, we just take, again, you don't want to take with your queen, because if you take with your queen, we just play rook to d1, and the only other option you have is taking with your king, and then also we play rook to d1, and the king needs to move, and the queen falls. So that is not an option. So let's go back. Um, so we cannot take the pawn, so our queen is still attacked, so what options do we have? Well, let's move the queen, and let's move it to, well, let's f make a small mistake, queen c6, we forget to defend our bishop on e7, and we have checkmate in one again. So that's not an option. Since we need to keep defending the bishop, uh, we can try queen to c7, still defends the bishop, but then we have the beautiful queen to f8 check. And after rook takes, rook takes f8 is checkmate. The pawn on e6 takes away the fighting square to d7. The bishop on e7 is pinned. And therefore, it is the rook on f8 giving the checkmate. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed this, uh, this game. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, what kind of uh, ga uh, game you would like to see next, if there's any particular player you want me to analyze. And if you, uh, you like these videos, be sure to subscribe and put on the notification so you will, uh, will see any next video I upload. Have a great day and hope to see you next videos. Bye-bye.